Well, joining me now with reaction to the first day of the G7 event is political science professor John Curtin. He teaches at the University of Toronto and is also the director of the G7 research group there. John, thank you for joining us. Good to be with you, Rochelle. So obviously with so much focus on individual economies getting back on track amid COVID over this past year, how are they now approaching this year's G7 agenda? Well, uh, this G20 uh, summit has, I think, the most demanding um, agenda challenges of anyone since the start in 1975. COVID-19 commerce as our um, economic recoveries a start to a spring to life, uh, climate change and conflict and uh, competition uh, with Russia and China and other uh, non-democratic uh, states. And uh, in the case of um, COVID and climate change, uh, the adversary is not um, a single individual uh, running a big um, autocratic uh, state. It's basically a nature and every uh, human on the planet uh, that creates uh, the climate change crisis we're already uh, in. So very complex. Uh, the crises are uh, interrelated. So we'll have to see uh, how they not only um, address each one, one by one, but how they uh, create the uh, synergies uh, that solve um, several birds uh, with one stone. Now, something else they all do seem to agree on are, is this expected endorsement of the 15% minimum tax on corporations. What are your thoughts on this and its potential impact? It's revolutionary. Uh, for the first time in a century, uh, they're trying and I think will succeed in uh, reforming the international uh, tax system to reflect the real economy of the 21st century as we come out of uh, COVID, uh, which has thrust us all into a, a digital um, age. It is uh, a simple um, set of two principles. Uh, the biggest, richest corporations should pay a minimum tax rather than get off uh, scot-free uh, by sending uh, all their money to uh, tax havens. And secondly, uh, those companies should actually pay the governments of the countries in which they make all their money their fair share of the um, revenues uh, they get in taxes rather than sending it all to uh, those tax havens uh, where uh, nobody um, gets any of it at all. So then something else that we also saw agreement on, this one billion doses of vaccines pledged. What kind of coordination is needed and what sort of impact do you think these doses will have? Uh, well, a great deal of coordination. I think we've seen a lot of it uh, already. A few days ago, um, Boris Johnson boldly said uh, the signature achievement uh, of the Cornwall summit is going to be a commitment, he'll ask his uh, fellow leaders, to vaccinate everyone on the planet everywhere by the end of uh, next year. But to do it, uh, they needed to make some credible commitments. Big, bold ones are right here, right now. Uh, the first uh, is a billion uh, new uh, doses over uh, the next year. And they've already uh, got uh, 700 million of them from the United States. Then Britain and Canada were waiting for the rest of the G7 to uh, get them up to uh, 1 billion. And since the language is at least 1 billion, uh, even more. But the big uh, question is, how quickly will they start to uh, roll out and actually get into uh, the arms of the poorest people in the world? Joe Biden has uh, admirably said 80 million of his will be sent out within the next three weeks. Uh, we're waiting for the others to uh, go as fast. And certainly a lot of campaigners and even the UN Secretary General wants to see more happen and see it done faster. But what other shared challenges do you think these leaders are going to discuss and what sort of outcomes can we expect by the end of the weekend? Oh, the biggest one by far is uh, climate change. It's the really uh, only existential uh, threat uh, they face. Uh, the one that uh, could end uh, human life as we know it on the planet for all time. And we're already at. Um, the tipping point, uh, the threshold. So I think what we'll uh, see is that they will agree uh, to stop financing killer coal abroad, uh, to phase out finally uh, fossil fuel um, subsidies, uh, to uh, raise much more uh, money 
to meet their overdue uh, promise on climate finance for uh, developing countries, to mobilize the entire financial system so it works to control climate change rather than um, to finance uh, the climate destroyers, um, the oil companies, and uh, on down uh, the line. But there is um, more they could and should uh, do. Mobilize the full power of uh, nature, the great carbon um, sinks, more natural protected areas, right. a great expansion of uh, forests, uh, peatlands, and of course, uh, protecting the oceans, their seagrass, mangroves, wetlands. Uh, stopping biodiversity loss is as important as stopping the emissions that go up to change the climate in the air. All right, well, thank you so much. We do appreciate your insights. Professor John Curtin there from the University of Toronto.